Good morning. This is Rob from Infinity Wave Tabs, InfinityWave.net. And this morning we're going to be installing our system on this 2006 Malibu XTI 23. We've never done one of these before, so I want to show you a couple of helpful tips to help you get your system installed. First thing I wanted to go through is what comes in the package. Uh, what you're going to receive in the package are obviously the two tabs, set of hinges, and all the hardware that you're going to need to install. Uh, you're going to have two Lenco actuators and along with the upper mounting brackets. Also, we're going to be installing our standard rocker switches on this boat, which is what I would recommend for all Malibus. Uh, they're incredibly intuitive, super easy. If you've ever used power window switches on a car, you can use these. You simply push left to surf left, surf, push right to surf right. Very easy. Now, a couple of tools that you're going to need to get you started is probably one of these. You're going to want to have an impact drill or a screw gun, uh, drill bit set. You're going to want a half inch wrench along with a half inch driver, a 7 16 inch wrench with a 7 16 inch driver, a Phillips screwdriver, tape measure, painter's tape, some clear silicone, marine adhesive, a Sharpie, and a ruler or straight line to get you started. Now the install on these actually goes very fast. The total install will probably take me less than two hours. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is look at the back of our boat. We're gonna put a little bit of painter's tape, usually about three strips, and then we're going to soft attach the hinges to about where it looks, it looks good for us. Hold the plate up to the back of the boat, and as you swing it, you wanna make sure that the mounting brackets don't come in contact with the platform bracket, okay? Now, there's no exact location or exact placement you need to have on these, but typically you wanna have them about two to four inches away from the edge. Now, what we're gonna do next is mark out the lines. Now, we've got our painter's tape. The first line we're gonna draw is two inches up from the transom. So you essentially wanna get a ruler or a straight line, mark it with your tape measure at two inches, draw a straight line across, and that's the whole, that's the line where your screw holes are going to go into the boat. Okay, so now that I've got the tape, I've gone and I've actually tightened down the nuts and bolts onto the hinges, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark one hole on the hinge. So you can see I've made a little mark on the line. I'm going to drill that hole first. Okay, so I drilled one hole on the line with a seven thirty seconds inch drill bit. Now I'm going to take a three eighths inch in reverse, and I'm going to tamper the hole just a little bit. That's actually gonna prevent your gel coat from cracking, so it's a very important step. Don't forget to do that. Okay, so what I've done now is I've put in one screw. I didn't use any silicone or adhesive. I'm going to line up the screw holes to the two inch mark that I previously made. I'm going to mark them with a Sharpie on the tape. That way I know exactly where to drill the holes. Okay, so I drilled all of the holes. And one thing that I did is I measured, you can see from this straight line over to the first hole, and I'm going to take a picture of this so that I can duplicate it on the other side. Once the holes are all drilled, go ahead and pull this tape off. And we can go ahead and get ready to mount the plate. Okay, so as you can see, the tab is now attached. I took some marine adhesive I put a whole bunch in there. You want that, it's gonna keep the screws from backing out, it's gonna hold the plates in nice and tight. Next thing I did was I measured, I put some more painter's tape onto the hole, and I measured and drew a line at four and three quarters inches up from the plate. What I do here is do a test alignment, and basically what I did is I took the actuator, I put it through the center bolt down at the bottom, I put the foot, the upper mounting bracket, onto the actuator, and now I'm gonna line it up, and make sure that it's not too toward, too close to the middle. We don't want it hitting the bracket. We don't want it hitting the outside here either. So we're gonna set this right in the middle, line it up with our line, mark our holes, and then drill the holes for the upper mounting bracket. Okay, we up marked our upper brackets. We drilled them out. We use a 3 8 inch drill bit all the way through in the center for the wire. We chamfered out the holes on each side. Now. 
Okay, remember how we said this is a 23 XTI. The 23 XTI is an inboard boat with this unique seating arrangement in the background. What Malibu has done is they hid some ballast tanks under this back area, which means you have virtually no access to it. What we ended up having to do on this boat was to actually go above the subfloor behind the ballast tank, and we're actually going to cover this with a little plate later on. But for this, some models, you will have a little wire up above the actuator. Okay, so now I've come over to the other side. I'm ready to install this one. It's gonna make it really easy. So I lined up my line at two inches above the bottom of the transom. And now I marked out three and a half inches, same as the other side, and drilled my first hole. I'm going to mount the plate, line up the other holes according to where the screws are, made sure I got the hinges in the same place on this plate as the other one. Makes it we're very up in the easy. Cockpit. It's time to install switches. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tape measure and we're gonna measure out a box two inches wide by two and three eighths inches long. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take a box cutter and we're going to cut an X into your vinyl. Now that can be scary for some people, but I promise it's gonna be okay. It's actually gonna make a very clean look when you're done. Uh, after that, what we're going to do is take a small, very, very small drill bit and drill a bunch of holes around the outside underneath the edge of the vinyl, so not through the vinyl. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out the box. Okay, so where we've gotten so far, we've actually drilled little holes, connected the holes with a drill bit, cut out the square, and now it looks like this. We got some, some scraps, but the edges fold down around and we then are gonna place our okay, switch in. Okay, just a quick note about placement on this. You'll notice that this is the older model with the actual physical throttle cable. The newer models that are drive-by wire, you cannot place this directly above the throttle. Now, the older ones don't have anything behind there, but the newer ones have a drive-by wire system that's about that thick. If you try and cut a hole above the throttle, you are not gonna have room to actually mount the switches. So don't do that. Now. I did have to clean up the hole just a little bit with a large drill bit. Uh, you do want this to sit fairly tight just so it doesn't move around on you. And the system is very simple. Again, you switch, push that button to the surf left and that button to surf right. Okay, now we have the hole cut for the switches up front. It's just a matter of feeding our large wire harness to the back of the boat so that we can connect to the actuators. You can see this part might be helpful to have a long pull or a friend to help you and possibly some zip ties to tie the wires up out of the way. So we're basically trying to get the wires from the front of the boat to the actuator wires. Okay, we're able to feed our wires back to the actuators. And what I'm simply going to do is strip the ends of the wires and the kit comes with these connectors. So I'm going to connect the, short, the shorter wires first, which are the red ones. And essentially it does not matter at this point which one goes to the white or the black. And that's why they're, they're not labeled in any way. We can take care of the orientation in the next step. Okay, so on these older Malibus, you have this big power bank down at the bottom. And the very first one is for the power seat. And you simply take the plug and plug it right into the power seat. That's a 30 amp breaker, more than enough to run it. On this boat, it's very, very crowded up here, but you have a negative bus, negative bus. And that's where you plug in the ground. And that's all there is for the power.